The increase in brain size and the reduction in dental size in early homo are some of the most important distinguishing factors for the lineage. They help us recognize fossils that we might classify as early homo. They've also been correlated and connected to each other in a model first put forward by Leslie Aiello and colleagues some 20 years ago. They noted the keen observation that if you look across mammals, the overall rate of energy production and consumption, the basal metabolic rate, is proportional to the overall size of the organism. In other words, if you look at organisms by size, you'll find that they basically fall on a linear trajectory with relation to the basal metabolic activity of their bodies. This is true even if we look at humans. And what's interesting about this, different tissues of the body use a different amount of energy. Your brain in particular is what we refer to as an expensive tissue. It uses a lot of energy. Thinking, it turns out, actually is hard work. The reason you're hungry after taking a difficult exam might very well be because you actually used a lot of energy in that process. Now, if we're thinking that early homo has a relatively larger brain, that means they need relatively more energy to fuel that brain. So one question becomes, where does that increase in energy come from? One answer can come from this reduction in dental size and the presumed change in human ecology and human dietary ecology that goes along with it. In order to allow for reduced teeth, one answer is that you might need higher quality food items, food items that require less dental processing and provide more nutritional bang for the buck, so to speak. This would also in turn allow you potentially to reduce the size of your gut. Your gut, broadly speaking, is the area that allows you to digest and get energy out of the food you eat. If you're eating higher quality foods, your food doesn't need to pass as long through your system to be able to get that energy out of it. For example, if we look at gorillas, one of the reasons we see them with a big, large belly is that they eat very low quality food, basic grass and shoots and leaves that require a long digestive processing time. In order to accommodate that large digestive processing time, they need a long gut to pass that through. Your digestive system, however, is also an expensive tissue. It takes a lot of energy to move molecules in and out of that system and to extract the energy, water, and other nutrients that we need from our food. So one way in which humans might have been able to maintain the basal metabolic rate you would expect for their body size, while increasing the relative size of their brain and increasing the associated energetic demands, is reducing or having a trade-off in another region. The most likely area, as evidenced by the reduction in tooth size, is a reduction in gut size. If humans made a transition to a higher quality diet, they simultaneously could have provided more accessible energy, which would allow them to feed their larger growing brains, all while maintaining the expected basal metabolic rate. This relationship has become known as the expensive tissue hypothesis. The idea that for early homo to get a larger brain, it needed to make a trade-off, and the most likely source of that trade-off was a reduction in gut size. The reduction in gut size, in turn, was accommodated by higher quality foods. We have the evidence of the higher quality diet coming in part from the less well-developed masticatory system that these organisms have. Small teeth, big brains, better food. That's the combination we expect with early homo.